thank you guys for taking your valuable time and attending the webinar. Um, I'm Sri Chimbali. I'm a metallurgical and a welding engineer, and uh, I have uh, with me Satish, uh, who is our structural engineer. We both are experienced more than 15 years in the industry, uh, solving uh, complex problems and providing our disciplinary um, expertise. So um, at, at Stress Engineering, we take pride in solving complex problems. We have helped several clients with our engineering solutions. Being surrounded with subject matter experts in materials, mechanical, process engineers, acoustic emission testing, finite element analysis, structural engineers, machine learning capability, uh, testing and instrumentation fields, this, all these uh, disciplines makes us very efficient in problem solving. The slide shows the slide here shows some of the solutions we provide to the industry. The slug catcher assessment is one example in which several experts from dif different fields worked simultaneously in an integrated role to solve a time sensitive pro problem. I presented this topic October last year in GPA midstream fall technical conference in Oklahoma City. This is a condensed version of that presentation. A slug catcher is a part of a gas pipeline system. It is an essential equipment at the receiving terminal of a multi-phase flow processing plant. A slug catcher is used to collect liquids that have settled in lines which can overload the gas or liquid handling capacity of plant, especially during pigging operations. There are three types of slug catcher systems uh, available in the market. One is vessel type, there's a store loop type, and finger uh, or multi-pipe or harp type slug catcher. The one we are discussing today is a finger type slug catcher system, which has four parallel pipes. So what is the problem with the slug catcher? The slug catcher was built uh, and during the hydro test, uh, first attempt, a weld cracked. You know, imagine like a huge slug catcher system, about 3,000 barrels of uh, liquid, uh, so pretty much water for the hydro test, and uh, you're all prepared, and you do the hydro test, a weld cracks, and, and the test fails. So you remove all the water, you repair the weld, and then you do a second attempt for the hydro test, and a different weld uh, fails, and uh, the hydro test fails again. Then the third attempt, the, the weld is repaired, and the third attempt, uh, the hydro test is passed. And then during a uh, gas purging operation, uh, there is a hissing sound coming out of another weld crack. So the, the welds are cracking. So the problem with the slug catcher is, is the welds are cracking. And in between these hydro tests, uh, the, the plant uh, changed the contractors, so there was some uh, data uh, exchange and uh, stress was brought on board and we were informed that uh, uh, this is a very time sensitive issue as the plant has uh, contractual obligations and back charges that can be involved. So where there is talks about back charges, it is a millions of dollars problem. We were given a timeline of eight weeks, um, told that uh, the system should be up and running by end of March, 2019. So we have uh, several unknowns uh, when um, assessing the problem. And this is the slide that shows the bird's eye view of the plant. And the long pipes here, you can see my cursor, the long pipes here are the slug catcher system. We don't know if the welds are good and what is causing the cracks. We don't know if there is a problem with the design itself. As the problem is time sensitive, we went back to our drawing board. We formed a team comprising of several disciplines to work simultaneously. On the material side, we are looking at welding and materials verification. And uh, simultaneously, uh, experts were looking into pipe stress analysis and also the structural details. This is the outline of today's presentation, and we'll be talking about problems with welding, restraint, uh, structural issues, 
and individually uh, I'll be talking about the welding and the material verification work that was done and Dr. Satish uh, will be talking about the restraints uh, in the in the pipe and, and the modifications that were um, proposed and um, performed in field. As mentioned earlier, this is a time sensitive application. As the plant has contractual ob obligations to be up and running, here is the timeline from start of the project uh, to uh, the end of the project with several activities that were performed parallelly. Um, so all the tasks uh, can be done and uh, the problem can be solved in a timely manner. So the project started January 18th and we're, the client was up and running by end of March 2019. The materials are grade X70 uh, with, with one inch wall thickness and 42 inch diameter pipes. So as, as, uh, as the project was evolving, we, we got obtained the material test reports. We reviewed the material test reports and found that the pipe is uh, X70M uh, thermomechanically processed pipe. The forged T's, the T's here that you're seeing uh, are quenched and tempered and the end cap here uh, is a quenched and tempered end cap. Uh, in the layout, it shows two slug catcher systems, but the current situation, we're only dealing with one slug catcher. So this is the future build-up plan uh, for the plant. So um, all the uh, 159 welds of the slug catcher system uh, were um, radiographically examined. And 19 out of 159 welds exhibited indications, indications like cracks, slag, porosity. One weld with a crack was cut out for failure analysis. So in the layout, if you're seeing the weld that was cut out, uh, the end cap had the, the indication, the end cap weld had the indication. This was chosen to be uh, cut out and sent to uh, SCS uh, Houston Metallurgical Lab um, for analysis so we can verify the material properties of the pipe itself, uh, material properties of the T and the end cap and the weld properties as well. So, and it is also uh, easy for replacement uh, for this section to be replaced. So that was why this particular area of the slug catcher was selected for analysis. So the, the the T, uh, the end cap and the pipe, the section of the slug catcher was received in the Houston lab. And you can see here the cap of a weld end cap. This is the end cap. And you're looking at the T here and the weld cap was removed. Uh, so uh, for, for X-ray, uh, when they found the indication, uh, they, they did X-rays before and after removing the cap. Uh, so the indication is much sharper. In the next slide, I'll, I'll show the indication. Uh, which is much sharper. This is the X-ray radiographic film uh, photograph uh, showing the uh, the linear indication, a, a a dark line here pointed by the red arrows. Uh, this image is with well reinforcement. On the right side, uh, you see the image uh, without well reinforcement. The 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 indication is very sharp. So radiographic examination, the principle works on density differences. So when you remove the cap, the indication becomes much sharper. So to confirm whether the indication is real indication, SCS performed a metallographic examination through the indication. So we, we cut through the indication here. Uh, we, we obtained a cross section right here polished it uh, and, and etched it with an acid, uh, etched it with an acid. And um, what you're seeing here uh, is the microstructure, uh, is, a, is a micro and the macrostructure of the wells. Uh, the indication is, is not a surface defect. It is, uh, so we couldn't locate it with magnetic particle test. It was only found uh, through metallography and, um, um, and you can see here, it is a subsurface defect and the, the defect uh, or the crack is in, in the beads, in several beads 
Uh, one thing about metallography is you can actually uh, see all the weld passes that were involved and uh, the fill passes, the root uh, that is showing. Uh, the crack is, is separated, the, the subsolidification grain boundaries here. Uh, these are the subsolidification grain boundaries, this pattern. Uh, so it, it, it did separate the, the, the solidification grain boundaries. It, it appears that the, this particular route was, was made from the inside surface um, of, of the slug catcher. So we, after metallographic verification that the indication is real crack, a portion of the crack was opened by lab fracturing uh, and further examined the crack surface was examined using a scanning electron microscope. Uh, scanning electron microscope revealed that the crack surface features uh, had, had dendrite patterns on it, indicating that uh, this is a, a solidification crack. Um, and it is not a common uh, crack that is found in carbon steel wells, uh, but, but if, if enough restraint is there, enough high restraint, in a very high restraint wells, it, it can occur. Uh, so the the cracks that are uh, in the li the linear indications which are real cracks or or solidification um, related cracks to verify the material properties um, and and the weld properties uh, the cross section was used to do wicker's hardness tests and what uh, we noticed was the, um, the the hardness the heat affected zone hardness adjacent to the root uh, was very high, 370 and, and 400 wickers, 382, which all corresponds to 38, 37 Rockwell C. And uh, this could cause um, additional problems in, in service from other damage mechanisms. So to reduce this high hardness, uh, a stress relieving procedure was selected. Uh, the stress relieving procedure at 1100F for two, two hours was simulated on these wells. And we observed that the, the hardness did, does decrease in the heat affected zone uh, to a acceptable hardness. Uh, and, uh, and we performed the tensile and Sharpie um, impact tests were performed on the pipe, the T, end cap and the wells to verify the material properties. And before and after uh, simulating uh, stress relieving at 1100F for two hours. And during that, uh, test, we noticed that the end cap, when we are stress relieving at 1100 F, the yield is falling below 70 KSI. So that's not uh, acceptable. So we had to change the stress relieving temperature to 1000 degrees F, which is lower than 1100 degrees F. And we did a simulated stress relief at, at 1000 degrees F and uh, um, did an across the well tensile test it did fail in the weld with an yield of 71.7 KSI. So the end cap at 1000 degrees F stress relief was okay. The yield was above uh, the, the required 70 KSI. We wanted to verify once again at 1000 degrees F simulated stress relief to see what the hardness values are. And this slide here shows the hardness root, uh, uh, HAZ hardness adjacent to the root. And that is uh, 294, 287, and 293 wickers, uh, which is um, below the 350 wickers hardness. So that hardness is satisfactory. After verifying the material properties, making sure they meet the, the API file uh, x80 uh, requirements, uh, both the mechanical and chemical properties, uh, we developed uh, welding procedures, so we do that 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 is used for uh, repair welds and also to replace the cutout section. So uh, we developed the welding procedures in accordance with API 1104. Uh, you can see here in the photograph uh, the two welders welding uh, using the stick process or shielded metal arc welding process uh, on a 42 inch diameter pipe with one inch wall. And this procedure was developed with and without stress relieving at 1000 degrees F. Here is a snapshot of the um, 
PQR, uh, the welding procedure qualification that was performed. And you can see the tensile tests, bends, hardness tests, and sharp impact tests that were performed to develop the welding procedure. Here is a snapshot of the welding procedure specification. Uh, so the welders were given this welding procedure specification that was developed uh, to uh, perform the repair welds and also the cutout section uh, to replace the cutout section. So we know what the properties are going to be for the welds. And if, if the welders follow the specification, there won't be any surprises uh, in the welds or their performance. Once we developed the welding procedure specification, um, we performed welder qualification. So you, uh, we performed welder on, on several welders, we performed on-site welder qualification. You want to make sure your welders are qualified. So the rejection rate and the rework rate is much lower and kept to a minimum. In summary, um, the pipe, T and end cap chemical and mechanical properties were satisfactory and meets the requirements of grade 70. We identified uh, problems with welding and uh, the welds had indications and they had high HAZ hardness. And we developed welding procedure and qualified welders to perform repair welds. And because some of the welds had high HAZ hardness, uh, the, all the welds were stress relieved at, at 1000 degrees F uh, to decrease the HAZ hardness and also uh, decrease the residual stresses. Now, uh, Dr. Satish will discuss about the work performed uh, for pipe stress analysis and structural modifications. Hey. Satish? Yeah, thanks, Ray. Let me see if I can get the control. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be talking about the um, the different analysis and assessment we performed for understanding the loads and the capacity of the slug catcher system, such as the the piping, the anchor rods, the piers, and the foundation. In a in a typical failure analysis, the the results from the metallurgical analysis will usually indicate the cause of the failure, such as if the failure is due to an incorrect material selection for the intended service, or issues with welding and welding procedures or if the failure is due to an overload or by fatigue. As Tree mentioned, in this project we had a very tight schedule so we could not go in a linear progression as we normally do in a uh, failure analysis project. So we, while we are doing the metallurgical analysis, we are also doing the pipe stress analysis and structural analysis and doing field verifications to identify uh, the cause for the leak and also do a uh, Perform a complete design review of this luck catcher system so that we can get this unit in operation. So th this slide shows the the layout of the uh, slug catcher system. The total length of this is around 520 feet, and it's supported over uh, 15 uh, supports. The the south end of the um, of the slug catcher system is designed uh, and built as a fixed support system. So the anchors are in these two piers and the uh, any thermal expansion and the um, expansion due to uh, pressure and loads are allowed to expand the pipe from the south end towards the north end and all the intermediate supports were designed as a sliding supports with um, with the ptfe pads underneath them um, so that's the that's the design and uh, as built but uh, during the field observations um, we noticed that these fixed supports were um, were slaughtered and converted into a sliding supports, and uh, we don't know uh, whether this uh, modifications was done uh, during the hydro test or during the installation or during the hydro test or after the hydro test. So the the the, the top picture shows the uh, the saddles and the anchors for the pier one, and the bottom one shows for the pier two. Uh, the one that is missing here is the one that's been cut out for the metallurgical analysis. And you can see uh, in these features that there is um, a differential movement between those different fingers. And this is at pier two. 
and then this the next slide shows the uh, anchors the sliding support at the north end of this um, system and this is designed as um, as a um, sliding support and we were also able to notice some of the grouts that cracked and we can as part of the field measurements we monitored the uh, the movement of these uh, fingers uh, during several days uh, the the estimated um, movement of this fingers for every 10 degree change 10 degree change in temperature is around 3 8 inches and by doing the field observations we were uh, we were able to confirm with our calculations that these pipes are moving as intended but on the on the south end the original design was uh, was to make these two piers as a fixed anchor support but there is they converted into a sliding anchors and the friction between the um, the base plate and the embed plate is what causing the uh, providing the anchor reactions. And since there is a, a different uh, friction coefficients here acting on how much these base plate and slide plates are contacting, they, they the pipes are allowed to slide independently, and that caused uh, some amount of um, misalignment between the the T's on these um, these two T's. And we were able to um, see it on the field, the, the, the amount of misalignment. And so we did a pipe stress analysis uh, with uh, to quantify the amount of bending that that's on these trees and see if that might have caused the uh, the failure during those hydro tests. So we did uh, as designed uh, condition where we uh, fixed both these anchors and also the as found condition where we made these two anchors as a as a as a sliding support and. Um, also using the field measured uh, thermal expansion and also the um, the cold spring that we measured we were able to um, simulate that and uh, identify the bending stresses on these t's and we also did a um, uh, field inspection with the with the residual stress measurements to uh, validate our analysis the the bending stress were high in some of these locations uh, but they are still within the allowable and the the differential movement of the slingers I mean, movement of these fingers cost the high bending but it's still within allowable and that uh, was not the reason for that failure by the time we finished the analysis the metallurgical analysis was also complete so we know where the the, the cost of those cracks on the leak but as we were uh, trying to put the system back together and uh, bring it into operation these supports were um, the the concrete piers where we are supporting the anchors. Those there were some damage. Um, we were able to sound it and measure the amount of damage, and there were also some grout damage uh, in the other uh, support location. Even though this is not a structural issue, but it's still a nuisance where the moisture can get under these embed plates and the corrosion can start. The other big issue in this one is. Um, as we the original design was to make these pier one and pier two as the fixed anchors and the, the field modification made them into a sliding anchors so now to prevent the um, differential movement of these individual fingers we decided to uh, make this pier two as the fixed anchor location and uh, transfer all the um, reaction due to thermal expansion contraction and the pressure and load to be reacted by the the spear two um the the as i said the original design was to transfer the reaction load to both these peers and when we did the assessment we found that the, the peer two alone um cannot able to take the shear and bending um to to act as an anchor so we had to um make the modification to react the uh expansion and thermal forces in this peer and also modify the spear to take the um to reinforce this peer. So the, the second part of my talk would be of discussing about the way we develop these anchor at the pier two and also the reinforcement of that pier for taking those um, additional shear and bending. When we started um, making this, um, modifying these anchors to transfer the reaction to this pier, the 
this the one that's shown here is the the most simple one this is the existing uh, base plate that's welded to the pipe and then the, the simple solution would be to uh, come up with two new saddles on the north and south end of it and weld it to the to the pipe and so that we could transfer the reaction forces to the pier but um the this this there are a lot of welding going on around this area as the post weld heat treatment was going on so the, the one of the big constraints was that there should not be any welding or the welding should be very minimal so we couldn't be able to go with this option so the next best option was to come up with some kind of a clamp with the bolted connections so we could be able to fabricate that and install uh, in the site with very minimal welding and we were given only two days of time uh, for the final installation of these clamps so after going through the preliminary uh, analysis of these concepts, the final concept that we selected was was that shown in this uh, inset here, which is very close to what we initially started with on the first day when we were sketching it with the client. And the the way we are transferring the reaction force to the um, to the anchor location is through the clamps, and the clamps transfer these um, reaction by by uh, by by friction that's developed between the pipe and the clamps. And we we developed the finite element model of this um, system to find out the optimal pretension that we need to um, use to install this clamp so that we, we will be able to uh, transfer the uh, thermal reactions without slipping, but uh, we don't wanna put in too much of external pressure on this pipe uh, when the pipes are empty and there's no internal pressure. So we were doing several iterations to find out the optimal pressure, optimal pretension. And we were also trying to look at, find out what the, the contact uh, forces between the clamp and the and the concrete pier. So the, this slide shows the, the, the stress distribution in the clamps when, when we just do the pretension on the clamps. And then once we, once we have an expansion or contraction, the amount of change in the stress and also the contact uh, forces between the clamp and the um, piers. We wanted to keep the, the contact pressure within the bearing capacity of the pier so that we won't have any local damage. So once we once we were able to um, uh, finalize the design, we were able to transfer this design to the uh, to the fabricator, and we they were able to go ahead and doing the fabrication while we are looking at how to reinforce this this pier. Again, we looked at several options in uh, reinforcing this pier by adding additional buttress wall and also increasing the the uh, width, width of this pier. And again, we were constrained with all the activities that were going on um, in the in the welding and post weld heat treatment going on here. And so the the next best option that we were able to um, do is engage this pier one by designing these braces. And uh, so we could transfer the shear from this pier one to the pier to the pier two to pier one, and also engage this pier one so we could uh, keep the bending and shear within the uh, system's capacity, and so we don't have to uh, do any additional foundation or excavation. So this 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 is the um, the modifications that we did by uh, making these clamps and the braces, and we were. To install all these in the two days. For installing these braces, uh, we had to drill through these um, through these wall, the concrete wall, and we wanted to keep the brace uh, in in line with the pipes as much as possible, and and also avoiding to hit the rebars in the concrete pier. So we did the we used the ground penetrating radar to locate all the vertical and horizontal rebars in the in the pier. And we tried to keep the um, eccentricity between the uh, the clamps and the braces as little as possible, so we don't have any additional torsion in the system. And the the photographs here shows the uh, the coring that was going on while the clamp was being delivered to the side. And once the coring was done, we were able to install uh, the same day the the clamps, and we were able to put tension these clamps to 40 kips for each of them using tensioners. And these photographs shows here some of the installation of the of the clamps. And 
and the final photograph here shows the the complete installation so we all these installation oh, was done in two days oh and when all the welding and post weld heat treatment was done on these tees and we were able to complete on schedule that'll be the end of our presentation